Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna take you through a beginner's guide into painting a crash helmet, the one that you can see here. This is a brand new lid, so that's the one we're doing today. I'll take you through some of the pieces that we're gonna to need today to get this lid custom painted. First of all, we're gonna need some panel wipe degreaser, give the lid a good clean down. And then to prep this, as it's a new crash helmet, we're gonna scotch bright it and just give this surface a really good key so our paint adheres to it. We're gonna go in with some solvent base coats on this. So we've got a silver base coat, which will be the main color. We've got some plastic primers if we need them to go over some of these small intricate plastic pieces that need to be painted over. We've got some specialist paints. We've got the Candet Fools Gold. So there'll be a bit of candy paint in this. And then for the artwork sort of textures and things that we're doing on this today, I've got the Golden High Flow Acrylic range with some of the gray scale so we can use that. Posca paint pens, the black and the white 0.7 fine tip for any intricate bits. Masking tape wise, we've got the fine line three mil, the inch masking tape and a two inch masking tape. And we've got some plain paper if we just need to mask out some of these bits to stop the overspray. So they're the bits we'll be using material wise. The brushes today, I'm gonna to use the Creos range. We're gonna use the PS290 for getting the main color down on this. And then for all the detailed parts, we're gonna use the PS771. So I'll stick you in a time lapse and we'll get started on this lid. See you in the next stage. There you go, in that first time lapse, you see me mask off this lid. I'll just give you a little talk through on how I did this. I had to take the front flip visor part out and there's two locating bolts either side on this front piece. You wouldn't do them and then that piece with the visor clips away. So that's how I got that piece off. And then I started to mask out. The first piece that I did was this bottom edge and I put some three mil fine line around that, and then gone in with the masking tape on top of the fine line, and basically just gone round the lid and masked off all that internal piece so you don't get any overspray on the bottom. Went over the edge here, and this is a raised lip on this, so I put the masking tape over, and then very carefully scalpeled the edge of the masking. With these soft rubbers, you can move this masking tape so I've just put this as close to that as I can. The actual artwork that's going on this is gonna be like a dark fade here. So you're not gonna see where it's black rubber on the edge of this lid here. We're gonna have some black fade out coming across here. So that'll just blend into the rubber. I've masked out the two air vents on the top, just pushed some two inch masking tape over the top and then really carefully went round with a scalpel just to catch the edge of that masking to get around those. The screw holes at the side, I've just rolled some masking tape up, pushed them into the hole just so no paint goes into them screw holes there. So that's that part of the lid done. 
the front visor piece here we've done the same again we've masked out this front piece and then scalpel round and then I've masked all the internal so we don't get any overspray over that mechanism at the front the side clips that clip to this side on the lid here they're masked off so this is all good to go now for the next stage which is going to be the prep stage so it's going to be a pair of gloves we've got a grey scotch bright we've got some panel wipe degreaser and we're basically now going to prep all these white areas with the scotch bright and just knock this shine out of the lid and give this a really good key ready for our base coat so that's the next stage i'll see you in the next time lapse There you go, in that last time lapse, I've gone round with the grey Scotch Bright and all these pieces now, the white round this lid is all dulled off and we've just knocked that gloss off the panel and that's given that a good key all round. It's now a good time to have a good look at your pieces that you've got and just double check your masking round because you've Scotch Brighted up to these. Just have a good look round and just check all where your masking tape and your fine line is and just make sure you've not pulled any away as you've been scotch brighting. So the next stage on this to do is to clean it. I would give this a blow down with air, with an air blower and just give it a good blow off, get all the bits off and then you're good to go for cleaning. So some panel wipe on a rag and just give it a good clean down just to get any grease from previous fingerprints that have been on it because you can get the previous lot like the owner can be touching it picking it up they've been trying it on and you get a lot of grease and moisture off your hands and that's what you don't want when you're painting because that will cause your paint to fry up and you can get like fish eyes and things like that when you've got grease so just give it a good clean down like that all over all round on both your panels or if you've got a lid that's got the front piece on just give the lid a full clean down but this is two pieces so just give that a clean down just to get any grease off like that and then you're good to go for your next stage on your motorcycle helmet. I would now give this another blow off, tack rag it down to get any dust off, and then you can start putting your base coats down. On this particular lid, I'm going to plastic prime this front piece. I'm gonna do this in plastic primer. And then this one is basically clear coated, so I'll go straight in on base coat on this. But I'm going to, just for belts and braces, I'm going to clear coat, I'm going to plastic prime this because I think this is one piece of moulded plastic and it's not got paint or clear on it. So we'll just, just for safe measures, I'll plastic prime this front piece up. So that's the next stage I'll put you in. I'll get this bit plastic primed and then we can start moving on to the base coats on this piece and this piece. See you in the next step.
there you go, in that last time lapse, you see me drop the base coat down. Before I did the base coat on this piece, I used the Standox plastic primer and gave this two coats of plastic primer just for belts and braces because this was a piece of molded white plastic and it hadn't been clear coated. And I don't want to just go dropping the base coat down as it wouldn't adhere to it. So we gave it a couple of coats of that. The airbrush that I used is the Creos PS290. This is the 0.5 mil setup with the fan cap. Running this about 35 to 40 PSI and you seem to get a really nice fan pattern with that. So then I moved on to the base coat in that time lapse and I was just doing very light coats on this. I just done a nice light coat and then just built the layers up, build them up and build them up. I could have used a mini jet for this and smashed the paint down, but I just wanted to take my time, get some nice even coverage on that. So we've got all that in silver, both parts. I'm gonna let this cure down now and then we can move on to the next stage, which will be dropping the textures in this. I'll drop a picture up, bottom of the screen now. This is what we're sort of aiming for, this sort of look that's on this picture. It's gonna be a nice Templar sort of helmet type thing with the steel and the rivets. And we're gonna do the gold bands on this across both pieces. So I'll see you in the next step. Just give you a little talk through oh, where I am. I've sort of moved on and there's been a few bits that I've not put in on the time lapse. You've probably just seen up to where I've done the brush steel and we've done the textures in the front of the mouthpiece of this crash helmet. So I'll talk you through where I am and how I've got to this stage. So to get this brushed steel effect, dead simple, nice and easy. I've just gone in with some transparent shading gray, dropped a little bit of carbon black in there. So we've got like a dark gray mix and I've just basically brushed over with the airbrush, dusted over, gave it a light pass all over, leave the paint sort of wet still, 
going with your scotch bright and then all you're doing is dragging down in passes in lines consistency going along and that will give you that texture of steel into your crash helmet like that so it just drags the paint down so that's how you get that texture and then to give it that sort of like metal look where it's got like the tainted back sort of look i've gone in with a orange oxide transparent and then just dusted over in certain places around and that just knocks it and gives it that like sort of rusty type weathered look on the steel so i went round and done that to get these holes this effect here on the front mouthpiece where you'd have the nice templar helmet you'd have like the breathing holes in the front i've gone in with a shield one of the circular shields picked a circle hold it up to the lid and then you just i'm just spraying carbon black so you're doing black dots all the way over and then to highlight them and give them like a 3d type look i've gone in on the bottoms of the circles and just knocked that silver back so you're just showing it's just pulling that white through that's in the lid and it gives you that 3d look on the bottoms of them holes and then back in with the orange oxide and then just done some light passes down off the holes as though it's like just weathered away on the bottoms of these holes here to get these patterns that are coming around for the candy gold this will be like a metal effect here i've basically drew it out on a piece of transfer tape this is a very low tack paper and you can draw on it with a pencil. So I've just drawn the shape that I want, cut it out, and then I've just placed it onto the lid, leveled that up, stuck it on, and then I've gone round with some two mil fine line and gone round, come round the lid, and then we've done the same to the top, place this on the top, get it in position, and then go round with the fine line and just use this as a little template to move round and go around the actual lid now once you've dropped the fine line down because we're spraying on this inside you've got to now mask this fine line off and sort of mask the rest of the helmet off so as you can see here i've gone round with some inch tape and gone round the fine line sat that on top of the fine line and made like a little well a sort of a pocket so when you spray in here none of the overspray is going to go onto your crash helmet and you're going to get a lot of colour on there if you didn't have this so that's where the candy gold's going all the way around we've masked out there i'll stick it in another time lapse you'll see me mask this side out and then we can start moving on to the candy stages we'll get set up for that and i'll give you a little tour through with that so i'll see you in the next stage Give you a little talk through on that last time lapse i talked you through on it that i was doing the fine line going around dropping the fine line in and then we started to put the inch masking tape on top of the fine line and i created a little pocket that went round all this piece that's now candy gold the masking went all around that and it just created a little well so when you're spraying you don't get any overspray on the parts that you don't want to get any paint on so i did that I used the PS290 and I've changed the cap over on this. I changed it to the spot cap so it's a little bit more precise and more intricate so I can get into these little pieces with the candy. I started out with putting a bit of silver in and just dropped a little bit of silver over the texture just to brighten that up again. 
and then I went in with the Candy Falls Gold by Specialist Paints, that's a two to one mix, and then just started to build the layers up of the candy and then got them to this colour. So that's where we've got to on the candy, that's all dried down now. The next stage on this is to make this candy piece give it a bit of texture, do some drop shadows on it, we're going to put some rivets into it and just blend this into the steel effect. We'll give it a drop shadow around the bottoms and just make it look a little bit more than it's just masked out and stuck on. So we'll give it that 3D look and just make it pop a little bit more. So I'll stick in another time lapse and then I'll give you a little tour through when we've done this stage. See you in a bit. talk through on the last time lapse we've now got all the artwork finished on the themed Knights Templar crash helmet so that's all the pieces there I'll give you a little talk through on how I did these little stages I'd got you up to the candy stage and we put the candy down and then I started just to knock back this candy with some shading grain just started to dull it off and then do some drop shadows round the bottom of that edge round this edge here a little bit in here and working round and then done some drop shadows as you can see all round here then to do the rivets it's the circle stencil again just picked a smaller hole went in with the shading gray done a first pass with the shading gray dots all over and then i went in with a white back over with the stencil and then just dusted to the tops where the highlight would be as the light comes down this way, you'd have the highlights to the top. So I'll drop them in all round and then went back in with the orange oxide and just dusted over, over the tops of the rivets. And then just to give it some real nice sharp textures, I went in with the scalpel and just put some little jagged highlights round the top of this gold band where the highlights would be working round bits on the rivets little line through the center where this would be bent at the top just here between the two shades same here and then work round with the scalpel along there like that so that's it for the video guys i hope you've enjoyed it the next stage on this will be clear coating i won't take you through this clear coating stage on this but if you want to see a beginner's guide into clear coat there is one on the channel and i take you through a whole process on how to do clear coating your first pieces of artwork. So that's the beginner's guide to painting a crash helmet. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, so you don't miss out on any more upcoming videos on Dread Custom Paint, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.